Hello everybody, I am here late again, late on the day and super late in the day. Um, so my Feel Good Friday is happening once again on Sunday. And today we're not going to be all happy and stuff because I'm going to talk about a serious topic. But um, as usual, I'm talking about this because this is something that I need a refresher on that I need to talk about. And so my subject today is um, how to minimize the effects of grief and of loss. So um, first of all, if you guys know and have seen me, um, you know that I had a cousin that passed away from cancer this past week. And around this time of last month, I also had a, or last year, I had a, a, another cousin that's really close to me that cast that passed away from cancer and I have hey everybody thanks for saying hi um and then I just I know a lot of people who have had any even closer relationships and individuals that have passed away and so um I want to be able to support those people and support myself as well and then I've been vacillating about whether I even want to come on here and talk about this and then um, I was looking and on our website of the religious organization that I'm part of and one of the latest magazines is about how to cope with grief so then I was like okay obviously this is something that I need to talk about so one of the reasons why it's just super important for me um I always like to tell a little bit about myself. Like, death is one of the most unnatural things to me. Like, there's a scripture that says death is an enemy, and that's how I feel about it. I distinctly remember, and I did an Instagram post about this last year. I distinctly remember when I understood what the concept of death was. Um, I was five years old. I had watched an episode of Webster. <laughs> so, I'm telling my age there. And, um his turtle died and I went to my aunt I said what happened to the turtle and she was like well the turtle died and I'm like well what does that mean and she's like well it, it went to sleep and it's never coming back and I was like well why is it never coming back and she was like well that's just what happens like it happens to animals it happens to humans it happens to everyone um we just die and we don't exist anymore and I cried myself to sleep the whole entire night like it's just such an unnatural thing for me. And it's really hard for me anytime. Like, I would rather go to, like, a family hour than go to a funeral, usually, and give a card. Um, so it's just, even though I have a hope, and I know other people have hopes, it's always, like, a really hard thing for me, just overall. And then on top of that, um, so I do have a bunch of information. On top of that, you know, there's different types of loss. So people think about grief and loss and only think about death, but also you can experience grief from other losses such as a divorce or a serious breakup or losing a job or losing your home or even losing a body part. So um, I also know a couple of people that are going through divorce. So those people can use this information as well that we're going to go over, but any type of loss to help support people. So getting into the information, Information. So knowing about, knowing is half the battle, right? So knowing that the grief is a process and what it's going to, some of the things you're going to experience is extremely important. And one of the phrases that I saw when I was going through this information is that grief is agony. Like knowing that, knowing that loss, again, whether that's a divorce or a loved one, is going to be agony that like that's what you're going to experience that's like part of the battle so i looked up the definition of agony agony is extreme physical or mental suffering synonyms are pain hurt suffering torture torment anguish affliction and trauma so knowing that so then a lot of people have um referred to the stages of the grief grief process and just remember that um you don't have, they're not in any particular order necessarily. I mean, the couple in the front will be what you'll be towards the beginning. The couple at the end will be towards the end. But you can cycle through some of those. 
but those processes are those steps of the process are shock which is paralysis of the bad news denial trying to avoid the inevitable anger a frustrated outpouring of bottled up emotions bargaining seeking in vain for a way out depression final realization of the inevitable testing seeking a realistic solution acceptance finally finding the way forward so the crucial thing to remember is to take your time to grieve allow yourself to do it in your unique way everyone is different and again you may feel sad then move to anger then come back to sad everyone is going to be different so some of the things that you can expect because again knowing is half the battle um feelings of emotionally overwhelmed such as crying spells yearning for um the past where this is deceased or the relationship abrupt mood changes um bouts of anxiety and anger and guilt can be com- common troublesome thinking patterns such as erratic or illogical like even you know thinking that you saw the person a desire to withdraw you could be irritable awkward a lot of times when you're in the presence of others um health problems changes in appetite weight and sleep patterns also be common and just difficulty handling normal tasks so again um if you're going through a divorce if you're going through the death of a loved one just knowing that like this is normal the having all of those things is normal and at some point in time you're going to be like well I ever feel happy again but know that this is not going to last forever know that you can get through it and just do do everything in your unique way take as long as you're going to need some people it may be months some people it may be years especially if it's really like a really close person it's going to be probably until you get that hope fulfilled you know even when you go like 3 to 5 years down the line you're probably still it's going to come up on the an- certain anniversaries and stuff like that so moving on to what we can do in order to help accept support from family and friends and a lot of experts consider this to be the most important part of the grieving process knowing that you don't have to do this alone and again it's it's unique to you know your needs find a balance between time with other people and time alone because you are going to need alone time you are going to need those times where you're going through those you know emotions those really deep emotions watch your diet and make time for exercise so that's what i'm usually talking about all the time making sure that we eat for certain things um drink plenty of water make sure you exercise i made sure that i got an hour of exercise in this morning get plenty of sleep um just knowing the grief can bring on extra fatigue um yesterday i really had two activities that i should have done um but I just couldn't get up. I can do the two things that I needed to do. I could only get to one of them. So know that and really from um Thursday when I think I started to definitely like Tuesday I got the news. I was definitely in the um the what was the first couple stages the shock probably Tuesday and then the denial on Wednesday and Thursday I think is when I finally started to feel stuff and then I was from that point I felt a lot more fatigued and then I went into um the phase that they were talking about where I was really irritable like looking back like I had made a post about you know I was being a brat that day and that was probably part of where I was starting my grieving process and getting the support that I had from who the people I was with at the time which was coworkers was super super important too so be be flexible. Just know that everyone is different. Um some people need to talk about it and express their emotions. Um I tend to be the type that I don't really want to talk about it when it's real fresh and like I just want to, you know, take that in prayer. I don't really want to talk about details of stuff. Um I want that to be my alone time, but I do need to like reach out and be around people. And so you just need to know I'm also like I have trouble necessarily feeling my emotions, so I'm I'm the type of person that I was I will actually 
need to trigger myself. Like I will actually like try to listen to certain music or uh, watch certain movies in order to trigger those emotions. Whereas other people watching certain things is just going to overflow their emotions and it's going to be too much for them. And they, they're going to be, they have so many emotions, they don't need to continually trigger themselves. So just know that um, everybody is different and find your rhythm and your balance between getting your alone time, dealing with your emotions and making sure you don't isolate your people yourself because you do need that support from other people avoid self-destructive habits so a lot of people will try to escape you know again if it's like a loss of a divorce then you'll try to like um replace that with something else or just any other just trying to drown out your emotions by self-destructive habits like alcohol or drugs then that's just going to be really bad for you in the long run so don't want to do that Make sure you balance your time. Um, you need to take that time to grieve. You need to take that time to to feel those emotions. So make sure that you have, but you do need to take breaks from that as well. So make sure that you're scheduling in activities to temporarily distance yourself from that particular pain. And so for me, that was like super important with the loss that I had a couple of years ago. Um just making sure that I was scheduling time to get out and to do things. Um, make sure you keep a routine. So again, we talked about sleep and eating and, you know, trying to get back to work as soon as possible. If, you know, you do have that three to five days, if it's someone close to you for your bereavement, um, that will help you have a sense of normalcy. And keeping yourself occupied with positive activities can help mitigate some of those painful emotions avoid making big decisions too soon um make sure because like yeah you don't want to sell your house get away from everything immediately you might not feel that way later so um avoid making big decisions too soon um if it's a loss that has to do with death be sure to remember your loved one you want to do that right so get away uh, you might consider taking a vacation. If a lengthy vacation is not practical, you can do something you enjoy for like a day or two. So I, for the funeral that I have to go to, it is going to be out of state. And so I'm thinking that I'm actually going to try to um, take like an extra day or two after and have like, so I'll, I'll be there probably from like Friday night and through Sunday, and that will be me supporting my family and the funeral and everything and um, just doing all that. But then I think I'm actually going to, I've already reached out to like one friend and I think I'm going to reach out to a couple other friends. I'll be in South Carolina. So I have some friends there. Um, I have a couple friends in a couple different spots out in um, North Carolina that's only like a couple hours away. So I'm, I think I'm actually going to take like Monday and try to hang out and make a vacation and just do some good things while I'm there as well. So that's something I'm definitely attempting to implement. Help others. Remember, you know, there's more happiness in giving than there is receiving. And again, definitely the loss that I had a couple years ago and last year, um, even sometimes some of my friends would come to me and they'd be like, don't you think you're doing too much? But me being able to like do these lives and help other people and learn this information for myself and share it with other people so that they can get that um being able to bless people like at a spa party and just give them free pampering um being able to give bible literature and other hope to people like that helped me so much to stabilize because there's always and even now like there's so many people around me that are going through way worse losses than I am. And like, I have to get them cards. I have to get to the funerals that I feel like I can emotionally support. And I fit in my schedule, like being able to use this information and bless other people's with it just is, is the maximum and helps me so much too. And then just, you know, all the other things I always talk about, you know, prayer, focusing on the, your hope, focusing on what you know will be good as well. So those were the actual um, 
tips that I had to share. But then, of course, I always want to make sure that we can boost that up because I always have a bunch of other things that I do in order to add a boost to it. So I did look up in what we have as a reference guide as to certain um, herbs and essential oil blends that can actually help with the emotional process. And so there's tons of tons of tons of tons of them actually. But one of the interesting things is um, if you've seen my video that I did on how to choose happy every day, one of the things that I do with that is what a, a group of oils called the feelings kit and all of those oils actually came up as oils to help with the grieving process and so um if you haven't seen that video definitely go on my youtube channel and watch that but i'm just going to briefly touch on those oils so valor this is actually valor 2 you can use valor 2 or 1 but this is a blend of oils that help you have courage, help you be able to perform certain things that you might not be able to do. So um, Thursday, I actually did this kit three times. And so again, um, you're feeling like you can't get out of bed because of what you're going through. That's one that's just going to help a lot. Harmony is a blend that again is going to bring balance. It's going to be balancing for you, harmonious release so if you're again like me and you may have <laughs> trouble necessarily feeling your emotions release is going to be a really good one for you um forgiveness is a blend of oils that you know we talked about those stages you're, you might go you might feel some anger you might have just certain emotions you might need to forgive yourself you might need to forgive some other people that'll be a good one present time is another good one to help you uh, concentrate on the now and the present and not keep going back to um, previous things, especially if that's what's causing some of those negative emotions and then inner child. So that group is the feelings kit. And again, that is I use this every day just for me to have balanced emotions. And when I'm going through a type of loss, like a couple years ago, there was one thing where I was triggered by something negative and I needed to use it seven times that day. Um, Thursday, when I knew I was having a hard time, I need to use it three times that day. So um, a couple other ones that were mentioned that I do use every day for other things too. Um, bergamot is one that I do in the morning and it really helps with um, giving energy and it also helps with a little bit of hormone balance. So that's one that I use. Um, I used this one last night, German chamomile. This one is very good for relaxation and sleep. And I'm probably going to make a tea and put that in that again because we talked about how important sleep is. And then abundance is just a really uplifting, spicy blend. I just, I love that. Another good one for lifting you up. And then one of my all-time favorites, which... I've had forever and loved forever. And this is probably if I had to pick just one emotionally supporting oil, it would be this one. This is the one that I'm going to have in my bag that I shared with someone like three weeks ago when she was hysterical in the bathroom. And I was like, put this on your wrist and smell it. Um, this is if I could only choose one, this is the one that I'm going to have when I need to be in public and my emotions are overwhelming me and I just need to bring it down a little bit, Joy is the one that will do that for me. So I have that every day. And then a couple other ones that I've just been throwing in here in the past couple of weeks. A gathering, just to help me people a little bit better when I'm not wanting to people. Uh, I didn't have this with me in Mexico. Perhaps if I would have had that, I would have been a little bit better. And then grounding, just bringing you down grounding your emotions and so those are just a few there were a few more on there and of course you may not need all of those but as with everything find your perfect mix play around with a couple of them and you know just help you release your emotions and help you calm down a little bit just to have that extra boost so that is what I want to share with you. Thank you, everyone that joined me. Um, again, I know it's not the funnest topic, but 
uh, again, I just, I have so many people that have experienced loss in their life, whether it is they're going through a divorce or um, they've lost someone really, really close to them. And I know they're going to be grieving for years to come because of the things that I've experienced. And then in my family, I have to go down to South Carolina. I have to support my aunt, um, my mother, who's been the caretaker of my cousin here. And I'm experienced a bit of loss myself and so I just wanted to because I needed the refresher on this the things I need to remember why I was behaving the way that I was earlier this week the things that I needed to do I wanted to share this with everyone else that's also going through some things some reminders it's normal it's okay you're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this I'm here to help you I'm here to talk to you I'm here to go to dinner with you give you all the support you need and then there's also a few natural things that you can throw in there just to lighten the blow when you just you can't stay home and you can't cry and you can't just be under the covers and there's a couple of things that you can use to help you face the day in the world. So as usual, if you know anyone that can benefit from this information, then please, please, please share it with them. It's such valuable information. Um, if someone has shared this video with you, then be sure to get back with them to get any different additional information or articles or what have you of what you need. And if you want any information from me, if you're directly my friend, then do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Bye. Live's not stopping.